Welcome ladies and gentlemen to today's webinar, Email Compliance for Office 365. My name is Garima Arora and I am Marketing Specialist here at Waterford Technologies. And I'm going to be the moderator for today's session. Before we start with the webinar, I'll give you an overview of today's session. Today's session will be approximately 4 or 45 minutes and we'll be taking all the questions at the end of the session. So today's session will actually answer all your queries around is Office 365 enough for your email compliance? So I'll now hand you guys over to today's speaker, Gary White, who is Data Protection Specialist at Waterford Technologies, and joining him, James Stapleton, who is a Data Management Specialist, uh, specialist here at Waterford Technologies. So Gary, I now hand over to you. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction, Garima. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to today's session. Uh, I'm going to keep this as uh, quick an overview uh, as possible. So today, um, uh, just quick introductions. My name is Gary White. I'm a data management specialist for Waterford Technologies, and I work as a CIPPE for Waterford Technologies, which is a certified information privacy professional for Europe. Essentially, it is my job to help our clients and advise around the best practices for data management and for compliance regulations worldwide. So today we are going to talk about the challenges of uh, compliance within Office 365. So this is the brief overview that we're going to look at today and this is just five of the main challenges we're going to try and concentrate on. So we're going to look at the compliance gaps, we're going to look at shared mailboxes, we're going to look at some of the complexity around Office 365, retention periods and then the potential for increased costs on how you can actually save money by implementing a third party solution. So, first slide, compliance gaps. One of the issues you have to look at here is in regards to legal discovery. So the difficulty for any organization in regards to a legal discovery or a subject access request, FOI, FOIA, or an internal external investigation is trying to find specific pieces of information across the entire organization. That in itself is quite a complex job, especially if you consider the more employees you have, the more mailboxes you have, the more content you have. So what we found is that you require a third party solution to be able to have full e-discovery capabilities across the entire organization. You can also uh, add additional solutions via advanced compliance add-on from my, uh, Microsoft, but these can be quite expensive and they can be quite complex to implement as well. These advanced compliance solutions, Basically, it requires that you have either an E5 license or an E3 license with the advanced compliance. Now, unfortunately, this obviously means that you need to have E3 plus advanced compliance or E5 for the entire organization. This can be quite difficult purely from a cost implication point of view, but it also causes issues when you want to be able to run those searches. So queries for an FOI or for a subject access request become quite difficult to implement with just Microsoft uh, 365 solutions. Then we look at content litigation. So with content litigation, one of the issues here is that it can take up to 24 hours to place legal hold on a specific mailbox. So again, if there is a specific issue that has been addressed or has been brought to, as a matter of concern, that 24 hours could be very potentially damaging for the specific types of information that you're looking for and putting hold on those mailboxes so that you have them and they haven't been deleted. Another problem within Office 365 is that you can only put a legal hold on the entire mailbox. So the difficulty here is you basically have to lock down a mailbox and not allow additional information come in or out of that mailbox. This is quite difficult, especially if the discovery is an internal discovery or an external discovery, and the information is going to be quite sensitive, and you don't necessarily want to share it with the individual involved straight away. The next issue then is shared mailboxes. So what we've just discovered or discussed here with around compliance doesn't apply to shared mailboxes. So what I see quite often with most of the organizations I go into is there's quite a lot of shared mailboxes there. It's a recommendation from different partners and from suppliers to basically say put information into a shared mailbox because it's free. Unfortunately, 
these have issues around compliance. So for running those uh, searches or running that putting legal hold or setting retention. That brings us into shared mailboxes. So as I said, we see this in a lot of organizations. And one of the first issues here is that they're limited to 50 gig. 50 gig is quite big in size. But if you want to go beyond that, you need to uh, buy a license. Now the problem with this basically means is that if you have a shared mailbox with multiple pieces of information coming into it, as soon as you hit the limit, that information is obviously not retained. It's maximized out, so it has to be cut off. This basically means that there is no retention uh, for compliance purposes within the shared mailbox. So you have no retention, you have no e-discovery, you have no audit trail capability, and you have no compliance or legal hold. Now, the only way to get around this is to go back and add in the E5 license or the E3 with the compliance add-on. But again, this is very, very expensive for an organization. So is there a better way to look at this? Is there a better way to manage compliance around your shared mailboxes, especially for users that have left the organization? So what we typically tend to see is quite a lot of people can leave an organization over periods of time. Those mailboxes are turned into shared mailboxes. And if they're turned into a shared mailbox, we have the issues we've just discovered there around compliance. So complexity. Um, only with E5 or E3 with the advanced compliance mailboxes can have the advanced, advanced search functionality across the entire organization. So again, what we will see is lots of organizations have the advantage of being able to split their licenses based upon their users' requirements. This is fantastic from a cost point of view um, because the vast majority of users within an organization, E1 licenses is more than adequate for their needs. But if you want to have that capability as a DPO, compliance, HR, or somebody involved in FOIA or a subject access request, you need the capability to be able to look across the entire organization. And without those licenses we've discussed already, this is not possible. Complex searches then become very difficult to set up uh, and in some cases they actually require specific coding around how you're going to run and implement those searches so these become very very difficult for you for you as a as a person responsible for compliance within your organization to be able to search simply and quickly to find the information that you require the limited the search results can be limited as well so what we mean by that is that the amount of information that can be presented is presented in a batch type search. And the problem there is that if your search is a wide scoping search, taking in lots of individuals or lots of keywords or phrases, this is limited down to what you can actually see and view. And then obviously that impacts your ability to be able to refine that search. Exports to PSTs then are limited to 10 gig. So Again, if it is a complex, wide-ranging search over multiple years or multiple individuals or multiple keywords or phrases or, or whatever contracting information that may be involved, this means that if you, when you go to export to a PST, it's limited, it's limited to 10 gig. And if you go beyond that, you're going to have to split or separate the exports. And again, it just adds an additional layer of complexity to the organization and to your reporting so that you can run those investigations to find the information as quickly and possible as, as possible for your organization. Retention. So retention is one of the biggest issues we see out there at the moment. A lot of organizations back on the 25th of May last year, they created and implemented a, a privacy policy as they had to under GDPR but we will see in different regions around the world like CCPA or Poppy in South Africa, but we'll see retention becoming such an important aspect of any compliance regulations around the world. Basically, the, the fundamental idea here is that if you have data, you need to have a good reason why you have that data. You need to have a reason why you're maintaining and retaining that data. And if you don't have a good reason for it, you must remove that data. So one of the issues we see here is that we've already spoken about shared mailboxes, um, but now we're also going to look at E1 licenses. So as I said earlier, a massive advantage from a cost point of view is to have a lot of your users on E1. The reason being is it's much more cost effective than the E5 licenses, but this then becomes an issue around retention. 
Essentially, what you're allowing users using the E1 license to do is to decide the level of retention that is there. So if they accidentally delete an email or deliberately delete an email, it's only retained for a certain period of time and then it's gone forever. So basically, you're allowing users become decision makers around compliance regulations and data management strategies for your organization. Any organization anywhere in the world, regardless of data protection compliance regulations, should be looking at strict retention periods. So again, as I said, the fundamental reasons under the compliance regulations are why do you have the data and why are you keeping the data? But even from a data management and for a best practice, it is always good to implement a strict retention period so that you know that the data is being maintained and kept for the period of time that it needs to be, and after that, it is removed. This is good from a cost uh, effectiveness point of view because you're reducing down the demands and the growth of your data, but it also feeds into the compliance and data protection regulations. One thing we just noted there as well is that we obviously monitor the different DPAs or the di different data protection authorities around Europe. And the German DPA has just issued a very large fine of 14.5 million for inadequate retention. Now, essentially what's after happening here is it's a slightly bigger story, but uh, an organization was recommended to implement a retention period because they were retaining data beyond the term for a reasonable explanation for why they had that data. They didn't implement the retention policy and on the second review, they were issued with the fine of 14.5 million. And actually, if you read on in the story, what it does say is that it's by simply implementing a proper archiving solution, they could have avoided this fine. In other words, they could have gone in and said that our retention period under regulations is eight years or 10 years, and then set that as the retention period implemented a third party solution to uh, proactively go out and manage that for them automatically, and then they could have avoided such a fine. Increased costs. Okay, so up to this point, we've obviously spoken about compliance and it is very, very important for any organization, um, but there is also the cost implication. So to meet compliance regulations, organi organizations really need third party solutions or as I said at the beginning, the Office 365 would fully E5 and the E3 with the advanced compliance add-ons. This is exceptionally expensive to an organization if you were to go all E5 or all E3 with advanced compliance. So a third party solution can help you with taking care of the heavy lifting of journaling, capturing, indexing, uh, and archiving all of those mails so that you can implement e-discovery, you can implement retention policies, and you can manage your compliance and data protection regulations simply and cost effectively. Another thing we notice uh, quite often is that when we go into an organization, we'll see quite a lot of redundant mailboxes. So redundant mailboxes tend to be made up of ex-employees. It's not always the case, but you will see a turnover of staff. And organizations tend to keep those mailboxes in case they need to go back and search for information that may come up in an FOIA or a subject access request. Problem here is, again, as we mentioned previously, to have the compliance functionalities there to be able to interrogate this information, you need to have them on a full license. Now, this is okay for one or two users, but what we typically see tend to see organizational-wide and sector-wide is that about 10% of all licenses within an organization are made up of redundant mailboxes. So you're paying 10% of your bill uh, for Office 365 licenses for people that are no longer within the organizations. The shared mailboxes, we've covered this already, but again, they're non-compliant unless you add the full licenses with the add-ons. So again, this is basically Shared mailboxes are supposed to be an advantage uh, to you as an organization to reduce the cost, but in reality, to meet compliance, they're not. You need to have them licensed. External assistance with investigations. So again, we've covered some of the complexity and we haven't gone into huge detail because this is quite a quick session today, but the complexity and the difficulty of being able to run uh, internal, external investigations around for subject access, FOI or security around that, can be quite difficult with the native solutions that are there within Office 365. This often requires that it means that an organization needs external assistance with this, and this in itself can become quite expensive. Training and additional resources. 
Um, again, look, I've touched on this in, in regards to the external assistance, but the training and additional resources is because it can become quite complex to set up retention, e-discovery, and investigations against Office 365, usually what it means is you're dependent upon a specific user within the IT department or multiple users within the IT department, and then they have to be retained, and obviously that training then, if they leave, has to be passed on. In an ideal scenario, the compliance professional within an organization would be responsible for and would manage the compliance requirements of any search without having to pass that on to an extra set of eyes or different people within different departments to look at that information. Now, I'm going to hand you over to my colleague, James, who Gramina introduced at the start. And James is going to bring you through a high-level overview of our solution. And he's going to touch on some of the points we've just covered there and hopefully answer some of the questions I've posed there. Thank you again for your time today. And I'll be available at the end of this session to answer any questions you may have. Um, so thanks again for your time. Thanks, Gary. Hi, my name is James Stapleton and, and I'm a data management specialist here at Waterford Technologies. So Gary has been discussing some of the challenges that can present themselves when you utilize a platform like Office 365 for email compliance. Look, as Gary has mentioned, you know, there's no doubting that Office 365 is an absolutely fantastic com um, communication platform and has an abundance of functionality. However, while that's all well and good, the reality is that there are certain gaps and complexities that cannot be ignored. And this is especially evident for organizations that try to use or implement the functionality when required. I obviously won't go into those again, as I think Gary has given a good overview of what those gaps and challenges are. What I do want um, to do now is give you a flavor of the types of benefits that you can get from looking at a solution such as ours to complement your Office 365 platform, improve your email compliance posture, save time, and significantly reduce your costs. So what exactly is MailMeter? So MailMeter is a powerful e email archiving and compliance solution that at its core is easy to use and administer. Uh, it captures every single email that comes in or out of the organization and stores it in a compliant repository. Every single email has a digital signature assigned to it. So that at any stage in the future, you can verify that it's the original email that has not changed by one byte. Having such a special solution in place allows you to do some very specific actions with your emails. Taking complexity out of compliance. This is what we do. It's our bread and butter. And we do this through fast, powerful e-discovery, FOIA, DSA, or searching, real-time message filtering and categorization, content litigation and exporting search results, uh, retention management, and finally, the proactive support we offer. So let's look a bit further at this. We provide the powerful functionality required for compliance with GDPR and FOIA across your email environment. As mentioned earlier in the webinar, this is not available in Office 365 E3 licenses unless you have the Microsoft Advanced Compliance add-on, which is a significant cost per mailbox. Essentially, we offer better compliance features for a fraction of the cost. Now, while it's great that our solution is powerful, the key takeaway here is that it's not in any way complex for users. Our simple-to-use feature-rich interface does not require specialist IT skills and can be fully utilized by, for example, compliance personnel or HR without having to have the specialized IT knowledge such as scripting language or running PowerShell commands. If a subject access request comes in or some other e-discovery request, time is of the essence and the relevant personnel in the organization have to action it. So as an organization, do you want to deal with the platform with a platform that requires specialist IT skills that you may or may not have? Or do you want to be able to interact with an intuitive solution that will bring you back the information you require in seconds, regardless of for what e Office 365 line you are on? With MailMeter, you get the information back in seconds. You can get as granular as you want. Drill down into messages, open attachments, tag messages, in-place holes, or annotate to document your findings. Export your results to PST or PDF. Likewise, if you have any external parties that need to access specific information, such as legal counsel or auditors, 
you can set up scope searches to provide a restricted access in such circumstances. All the while, every action has a full audit trail for transparency, and there are no limits on how long those audit trails are kept, unlike Office 365. Also, I don't have it specifically mentioned on the slide, but there, there is no need to have shared mailboxes as we have everything captured in MailMeter. As well as that, delegated access to, you know, can be set up in MailMeter so that a manager, for example, could access their former team member's email if this is required. So real-time filtering and categorization. This powerful proactive feature allows you to define and set early detection pre-archiving rules that will categorize emails so that you can identify potential compliance violations that can be actioned and dealt with before more damage is done. These rules can be based on keyword content and messages that might trigger a compliance violation red flag. And once messages have been identified, they can be reviewed, annotated, tagged, deleted, placed on hold, etc. The great thing is that this can all be automated with MailMeter. For example, compliance personnel could schedule a plan to run each Monday that checks all messages from last week against a sensitive word list and present the results for reviewers. This is very time consuming and a manual process within Office 365. Content litigation and exporting search results. As Gary mentioned earlier, you need the higher level plans in Office 365, such as E3, in order to have litigation hold available. MailMeter provides litigation hold regardless of what plan you have and can be applied across whole mailboxes as well as individual messages. There is no delay and it can be activated straight away and released when required, again with an audit trail captured. From an exporting point of view, this is quick and easy compared to Office 365 with no limits in size of PSTs. You can also export a PDF, and this is relevant in that it provides a big advantage to compliance staff in the context of uh, DSARs or e-discovery in that it allows them to put search um, or search results through a redaction engine such as um, you know, Adobe Writer to take out any confidential third-party information um, that may not be applicable to the investigation. Retention management. So prior to legislation such as GDPR, data retention policies were not necessarily top of mind for most organizations who tended to hold vast amount of data. However, post GDPR, most organizations have or are in the process of defining their data retention policies, and in many cases, asking IT to implement these. Remember, your email platform is a communication tool and was never designed to hold business critical information in a compliant manner long term. On this basis, it's important to ensure that you minimize the amount of data that you have in non GDPR aware email repositories while ensuring that what you do keep meets compliance requirements. Common best practice is to implement a strict but sensible retention policy on your email platform of, say, two or three years, for example, and use MailMeter then as your long-term compliant repository with retention policies set up to automatically purge emails as per the requirements of the organization to ensure compliance. As part of this process, MailMeter will be also proactively carrying out real-time message filtering so that organizations can categorize emails based on criteria such as regulatory violation or GDPR or CCPA sensitive, etc., thereby controlling what goes into your archive and the retention of such information. Proactive support. Okay, so up to now I've been outlining how our solution can provide the email compliance required regardless of Office, 36, um, Office 365 plan. However, something that should not be overlooked is the support that a vendor provides. And this is something that we take pride in and it's reflected in the high client retention rates that we have. We're not in the business of selling our software to clients and walking away. We appreciate that there are situations where clients are looking for advice and best practice and direct expertise for an e-discovery investigation. Our team of experts have years of experience in this area and it's all provided as part of our proactive support. So if we turn to um, in relation to lower costs while improving your compliance. So obviously you can see, feel, see there's a theme uh, within, this, uh, within this webinar in relation to cost reduction, okay? So with a solution like MailMeter, you can avoid the Microsoft Advanced Compliance 
add-on costs. There's just no requirement to, to have that along with it. You can reduce the cost of your email backups as everything is archived anyway. You avoid the cost of redundant mailboxes as well. So again, everything is captured within MailMeter regardless of what plan you have in Office 365. So you have that freedom to really decide within your organization what are the appropriate plans uh, that, my, that, that my staff can, can use. Reduce requirements for external investigation. So again, you know, as I, on the previous slide in relation to the proactive support that we provide, this can be a big cost for organizations if they need to do e-discovery and they hire external consultants as part of this. That can really ramp up the, the costs. This is, again is included as part of our overall solution and the support that we uh, provide with our uh, access to e-discovery experts. And again, finally, decrease the time spent on administration tasks and increase time on innovative tasks. So again, I think every organization out there is striving to reduce down the amount of mundane admin tasks that they do. And it can't be underestimated the amount of admin that is required in relation to Office 365 from a compliance point of view. This is something that we can dramatically reduce with, with MailMeter so that again, you're spending more time on the core business requirements. So finally, before I finish up, I just want to give you a quick um, look at a use case. And this is in relation to a uh, client that we were dealing with last year. Uh, they're in the manufacturing sector. They were based in the UK. And they were a client that were moving to Office 365. Okay, They had 800 active mailboxes. They had a a uh, couple of hundred inactive mailboxes as well. And what they were concerned about initially was very much around the cost of the migration. And they were also very concerned in relation to ensuring that they were compliant post-migration as well in, a, in an Office 365 world. Okay, so this was a big... Um, uh, these were big concerns to them. Legal investigations were also on the rise as well within this particular organization, and the, they were also receiving a lot of uh, data subject access to requests under the GDPR legislation. And, you know, for them, they needed to be able to perform searches in a timely manner. As the investigations were rising, you know, this was taking up more resources and they wanted to be able to uh, create efficiencies, reduce down the time. Um, the cost of managing data was also increasing. And overall, they wanted a uniform compliance um, across all their mailboxes. So when we spoke with them, we went through all of this with them. And the overall solution that we were able to provide to this particular organization was, was in relation to um, having MailMeter in place. And with that, we ingested all historical mailbox content, including the PSTs that they had into MailMeter. Um, and really, that was allowed them to create a, a compliant repository for all their, their emails, so that for any searches that need to be carried out, they could carry out those searches with, with MailMeter. It reduced the cost of the Office 365 migration, as they were only bringing over relevant mailboxes. So instead of being in a situation where they were maybe going to bring over everything across the Office 365 blindly, they were now in a position where they could just decide, okay, we can just bring over maybe two or three years worth of emails over to Office 365. And this helped then with the retention policy that they wanted to implement. So they set up a retention policy of two years on their email platform and safe in the knowledge that MailMeter then was their compliance repository. So that they, for, they could set up their ultimate retention policies of whether it be se seven, 10, 15 years uh, and manage that via, via MailMeter. All email, emails compliant and searchable under FOIA, DSA, or regards of what Office 36 plans the client has. So overall, there are significant cost savings as a client could choose a mix of E1 and E3 plans without requiring the expensive Office 365 compliance add-on. Okay, so thanks very much for that. I'm now going to hand you back um, and uh, we can take it from there. Thank you. Well, thank you, Gary and James, for taking part in today's webinar. I hope everybody finds it interesting and insightful. So we'll quickly take a few questions which have come through. And if we are not able to take all the questions, I apologize in advance, but we'll respond to everybody through email. 
Also, a copy of a webinar will be shared with you after the webinar. Okay, so we're just going to go over to a couple of questions here. Uh, we've had a couple of questions in from people online. Um, I'll have a look at the first one here. So the first one is, uh, we have E3 licenses for a lot of our users. Does this not cover me for compliance? Uh, the short answer is no. Um, E3 for a lot of your, your clients or a lot of your users would be the first part of that question I'd like to look at. So. Which, uh, as we said in the, at the start of the webinar, essentially what you have to have is E3 for all users. And you also have to have the advanced compliance features for all users. So a minimum of E3 plus advanced compliance. If you have any users that are on E1 or less, as we touched on again in the webinar, they are not covered under compliance reasons. Secondly, um, one thing that should be noted here because it is there is a lot of confusion in the marketplace about this. E3 on its own is not enough as a compliance solution for an organization to meet GDPR, CCPA, or POPIA, or whatever compliance regulations in whatever geographical location you are in. You need a third party or the advanced compliance solutions add-on as well. Hope that answers that question. Okay, we have one other question here for me. We have a document management system. Doesn't that cover us for e-discovery? Okay, so this is a good question. Uh, I get this quite a lot. Um, so some organizations have historically a legacy document management system that they use uh, currently, and they are great systems. They're fantastic. So we'll often see this within the financial services, the legal, or some government sectors as well. The issue that I've come across here, and it is, again, it's a, it's a question that needs to be posed internally by yourself to uh, whoever is responsible for the document management system is, who is responsible for putting the information and how is the information gathered in the document management system? In my experience, what I have seen, it essentially comes down to the end users deciding that the piece of information via email is relevant or maybe potentially damaging from a compliance, regulations, legal, or otherwise point of view. If that is the case, and if it is a case that the end users have to make that decision to manually move the information into the document management system, again, we go back to that point I made in the webinar that you are basically putting decisions around compliance, revenue, legal, financial, HR, so on and so forth, into the hands of end users. That's not a good decision from a compliance point of view. You should have a capture role and then a relevant compliance professional making decisions. Uh, we then have two more questions which are for James. So I'll hand over to James there now. Thanks again for your time, guys. Okay, I think I see a question here. Yeah. Um, so this question I have here is what should our retention period be for email? Okay, so. Yeah, I know I would have touched on retention um, earlier in the webinar. So really, um, you know, as regards with retention periods, this is, there's no one size fits all. It's, it's going to be very specific to a particular organization as to how long they need to hold on to, to emails. Um, there's going to be different types of information across, uh, held within emails. So it's going to be dictated by, by the business and by the data protection officer within the business to decide what are the retention uh, periods for for email so obviously I re reference to the two um, uh, in relation to having a, uh, a retention period of two to three years on your email platform and that is you know as I said good practice that our clients use in relation to have a have a hard retention period on your email platform and then you can use your compliant repository in MailMeter then to have your ultimate retention policies for the for the business so you can have multiple policies whereby depending on the type of data you have whether it's finance information and the various uh, regulations that you need to adhere to you can then have your retention policies automated within MailMeter instead of having all your e um, all your emails held within the email platform, which may not be uh, uh, fully compliant. So as I said, it's very much going to be dictated by that um, and really it's going to vary for, for every organization. 
So I'm just having a look. I don't think we have enough time to cover any other questions at the moment. Um, if there are any other questions, I will get back to you after this, um, separately after the webinar. So I might just hand back to Garima at this stage. Thanks, Gary and James, once again. And I'm really sorry that we do not have any more time to take up more questions. So I would like to thank everybody once again for joining us today and to our, all, to our speakers, Gary and James. And we would also be following up our recording for the webinar. So please feel free to share amongst your colleagues and friends.